Hi, this is Brian with Pioneer Builders. I thought I would take some time and go through something that perhaps in residential construction we don't spend a lot of time with, but that's a batch plant ticket for ready mix concrete delivered to a job site. In this particular case, this ticket was uh, part of a concrete placement for a front porch in residential construction. A lot of the information is very basic, but it's still important to note there could be, a, unfortunately, at some point, a concrete failure. And when that happens, fingers start pointing. So if we're more educated on how to read these, the better. A lot of this information is very basic, a date, customer number, order number. The plant number can be important, and the delivery ticket number is very important. In this particular case, we had five cubic yards of concrete that was ordered. There were five that were was delivered. There was one load with a slump of four. So not an overly flowable mix, but not too dry either. We have the time out, the time in, our company information, and then some instructions when it comes to actually getting to the job site. Now in here, we see these are codes that would be used in calculating how much the concrete company charges for this particular batch. So we see the quantities in the left column of five, that's gonna be per yard. There's a standard each for a minimum load charge. It wasn't a very large placement. Uh, environmental compliance, a winter performance, and then a fuel surcharge ready mix. Again, we see the driver number, truck number, information that may be important in the future, but generally wouldn't be important to check right off the bat. The tax code can be important, but that's gonna be more for accounts payable to make sure that the right tax was figured on the job. We have a load time and a driver name. So to run through this top portion fairly quickly, we have truck driver dispatch ticket this ticket here, time and date. It's five cubic yards for the load size. We have a concrete mix. Now let's pause for a moment there and talk about concrete mixes. It helps if we can equate that with baking a cake. So if we bake a cake, we know that there's some basic ingredients that go into the cake. Could be eggs, could be uh, oil, flour, and the larger the batch for the cake, you just take the quantities and multiply them. So it works very similarly when it comes to batching concrete. In this case, we'll see that there's design quantities, required quantities, and then what was actually batched. So let's walk through each one of these. For the material and description columns, we'll see that there was number eight pea gravel for the aggregate. There was sand class. I can't read that, it's either two or Z. There's type one slash two Portland cement concrete. There's water. There's this one here, MBAE90. So what is that? Well, that's an air and training admixture and it's produced by BASF, the German chemistry company. You'll notice when we go through the quantities, there wasn't a whole lot of that added. And then we have this percentage figure for hot water. So what was our design quantities? This is at one yard, that cake, so to speak, if it was one yard of concrete, would have 1890 pounds of pea gravel, 1200 pounds of sand, 517 pounds of, of cement, uh, 292 pounds of water, four and a half ounces of that admixture, and then that 50% water figure. If you take these numbers and multiply them by five, just like multiplying uh, recipe quantities, you'll see that that's where these numbers come from. So it's just taking the design quantity, multiplying it by five. However, when you get to what was batched, just like in real life, if you're baking a cake, the numbers don't always come out perfectly. So instead of 95, 68 pounds of pea gravel, there was 9,500 for a variance of a little less than what was 
designed at 0.71%. The sand, not quite 1%, less 6,300 pounds instead of 6,361. The cement was down by 0.77%, 2,585 to 2,565. The water, 403 pounds, so 1.04%. That admixture actually uh, was a 24 ounces, close to 7% more, and then a little bit higher on the water there. What's uh, interesting is there's something we know about pea gravel and sand, but we might not think about. The pea gravel has a moisture content. Sand has a moisture content. These aren't uh, baked products that are used. And so when it comes to concrete, you really have to pay attention to your water to cement ratio because the more water to cement, the weaker that concrete is going to end up being. So when it comes to the pea gravel, you'll see that they figured 1.25% of that for the moisture and the sand was 6.02%. Now here's where a little bit of math comes into play. Each gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds. And so that's where some of this information has to be converted. Here we have our gallons of water. So you have to multiply the batched times the moisture to get to the water gallons. And that's the unit of measure there. Uh, if you run the calculations, you might see very minor variations. I think that's just due to rounding depends on how their software works, that type of a thing. So when it looks at, when we look at the total moisture or water in gallons, we would have to add up the moisture from the pea gravel, the moisture from the sand, and then that conversion of water uh, poundage to gallons, 49 and 49. Now we come to the bottom. The actual load comes from what was batched, these numbers added together. 19,186 pounds for that load. The design uh, ratio of water to cement is 0.565. The actual was 0.352. So we were drier than needed to be. There was less water. And that means we don't have to worry about how strong the concrete is going to be. The design was 175 gallons of water. The actual was 155.1. To add, we basically had 19.9 gallons or 20 gallons to play with. The slump was four inches. We see these zeroed figures here, and then the trim water at minus 35 uh, pounds per cubic yard. There was a note, manual feed occurred. So hopefully that helps a little bit, hopefully uh, it demystifies some of how to read a concrete ticket. Structural engineers, no doubt, are very familiar with this. Uh, architects, maybe as well. But it can be very easy just to take these tickets and throw them in our truck and move on. So hopefully this helped. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. You can check out uh, more posts and videos and things over at Instagram, Pioneer Builders, Inc. Thanks for listening.